Hey, everybody. It's me, Max, and welcome to this special issue, special, issue, special edition of Megabytes, my full length podcast I do exclusively for members of Maximus Premium on a regular basis. And I am here joined in studio today with the incomparable, the awesome, the redoubtable, the lovely. Roxy. Roxy, are you there? I'm here. Happy Premium Day. Hey, what's going on? Thank you. How you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm fantastic. Fantastico. I'm fantastico. Magnifico. Nah. I'm, mag- I'm magnifico. <laughs> I, think. I guess you can say. I'm alive. I'm alive. Hey, listen. I mean, you woke up breathing, so you're ahead of the game, right? Well, that's the most important thing. You know, what was the, as a Japanese um, proverb, it goes something like, as long as you have a roof over your head, uh, you know, a, a bowl of porridge for a meal and an arm for a pillow, that's, ha- that's happiness, believe it or not. And, and so I, I, I don't know if I fully agree with that, but I mean, I guess in a sense, it's good that you're, you know, you're, you're surviving and you're alive. So, you know, it's the simplicity of life. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, that's the idea. The idea is to reduce things, reductionism. So the idea is to kind of reduce things down to their simplest form. So you're kind of satisfied with the m- most meager things that you you're, you have, you know, and this way, you know, you don't ever feel, really feel disappointed. Um, I, I, being a capitalist, I don't know if I, I fully embrace that, but it is a, a good w- thing to tell yourself, kind of program your mind when things don't exactly go your way. I don't know. Yeah. But. They could always be worse, is what you're saying. Oh yeah, it, it could be. Hey, you sound fantastic. I mean, is that your new microphone or something, or your, your new PC? Because it sounds, you're, you really sound. You're coming in really clear through the headphones. So that's oh good. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get a new microphone, but I don't. No. I don't. Uh, I'm not in a cardboard box anymore. So yeah, I was- I've, I've upgraded. I've upgraded. <laughs> Okay, so so we're doing this for everybody. So all my followers are, can listen into this, and I and I'm gonna process this and and later on. So we'll put it, we'll throw it on YouTube eventually. But you know, the thing is, uh, if you don't already know, the, Roxy's notorious for her microphone problem. <laughs> like you can't have a podcast with her without her having some. Pro- it sounds like sometimes like she's eating her microphone while she's talking. It's really. And I do get hungry. I so. mean, you, you do. I know. I know you do. Yeah, I know you. You got an appetite. So you know, it's like all that protein <laughs> there in in the in the in the in the microphone, whatever. But anyway, yeah, she's got. So this is actually for her to have this kind of a connection right now. I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm very happy. So, but so thank you for that. I don't know what you did, but I'm glad it's working really good. I can sincerely hope everybody can hear her well. But anyway, um, yeah. we are also we have in studio with us today. Yes. I'm here. With, we, I, I have to introduce them. Oh, everybody, if you don't know who this is, then you don't really follow me that close. You don't follow me closely enough. But everybody, or most of you, should know Francisco. So Francisco is actually here with us today. Francisco, are you there? I hope his microphone is working. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have some technical issue. Wait a minute. I got to see that, Francisco. You should be able, just there. You go. Uh, there he is. Hey, I'm, I'm psyched to be here. Hey, what's going on, friend? Hey, it's 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 a it's it's been a great week already. A lot to be encouraged about. Yeah, that's true. It has been a that's really true. good week already. We've had a we've had a really really good uh, Monday. I think personally, I don't know. I mean, that's the way I look at it. We look at things a little differently than some people. Most people are very they're hell bent on the negative. So you know, I try to find. Well, that's what's great about premium though, because I mean, yeah. I mean, Francisco, you know, he's, he's an awesome addition to premium too, but I mean, there's, there's so much positivity flowing through that channel and you really encourage a lot of people that are, that are on there. So it's a good oh, yeah. place. It's a happy place to be. Oh yeah. Francisco, you know, um, because it, you know, Big F, as I call him sometimes, he's always sending me stuff. Like, it'll be 2 o'clock in the morning, and he's forwarding me some poll that broke in some part of the world. I don't know, Zimbabwe or something like that. <laughs> There's a poll out here. The university is Zimbabwe. They say Trump's ahead, you know, and look at the data on this. And so he's a real numbers <laughs> numbers cruncher or numbers muncher, I guess you would say. Um, but, you know, it has been really. What are you seeing right now, Francisco, by the way? I mean, specifically today, yeah. what are you looking at? Yeah. So. I compiled five things today to be encouraged about. So, and, and it starts out with some stats. 
So yeah. if, if you believe, as I do, that the truth is the first requirement for change, mm-hmm. 66% of Americans believe that J6 was at least a partial setup. This helps yeah. Trump. 69% uh, believe that uh, Joe Biden is guilty of high crimes. Um believe that that the lawfare against Trump is blatant election interference. And my favorite, because I've tracked this the last three years, three years ago, 48% of Americans thought that the 2020 election was impacted by fraud. Then it got up to 52%, then 56%. Rasmussen just broke some data. It's now up to 62% of Americans. And I think that's encouraging because as the truth comes out going forward, that helps the cause for election integrity. Well, that's, um, you know, bottom line is people feel that there were some irregularities that took place. So, you know, and they are looking at things that we have been looking at for the last, what, two and a half years. And there are just more and more people feel as we do or they echo sentiments as we do. And that's that's a pause. That's always positive. I mean, as long as the numbers and the lines are going in the right direction, I'm happy, even if they're not moving that 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 fast. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And um, so the, the other thing that, that really strikes me as I look at a lot of polling data on issues, like we, we always talk, you know, you hear the country is divided and the progressives are in charge. The reality is that name an issue. You know, abortion limits, censorship, need for voter ID, fund the police, close the border. The majority of Americans have a, have a conservative viewpoint on just about every single issue. So we, we really are the majority, and I, I find that encouraging. Well, we're a center-right country. We've been that way, I would say, probably for the last 30 to 40 years. And we were more conservative, though, if you go back a half a century ago. But then again, the lot, you know, the goalposts have moved as to what is conservative and what is liberal. You know, 40, 50 years ago, you didn't have gay marriage, for instance. So that wasn't an issue. Um, but, you know, the country. So in many ways, the country has become largely more socially um, uh, liberal uh, as a whole. But on the other hand, more and more people have, and I think this has been is has sort of anchored the country in the center and moved it to the right. So I, I view us as uh, I know this is sort of like maybe not as as hopeful as some people would think, but I think the country for the most part is center right. I, I don't think it's a. I wouldn't say that whole country is a right wing country, but you know when you hear the argument though that I hear often from the left that only. As far as you take Trump supporters, they only make up 33, 25 to 33 percent of the country. The same thing can be said for Biden supporters or for Hillary Clinton supporters, because if you look at the poll, if you look at the actual numbers from the elections, that was a pretty divided country. So, you know, I, I think that's a misleading number because you can argue counter. You can argue it's counterintuitive. You can argue that neither every side's about equal. Um, and that's only because only half the country votes roughly. What is it? 55, 60 percent of the country votes. I mean, if you if you exclude 2020, it's usually like 50, 55 percent of the country votes in a presidential election. So, um, you know, they, they yeah. And that's because a lot of people also can't vote. You know, I mean, there, you have 330 million Americans on everybody's eligible to vote. So, um, you know, the uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's not, it, every, everything looks good. It's, it's hopeful for America. And that's a positive thing. What else do you have? So if you follow if you follow the passion meter, as I call it, uh, the Iowa fair, I mean, Trump, Trump was off the charts. He, he stole all the energy, in my opinion, from, from what I saw of it. Um, DeSantis, it looked, it looked flat. Um, so some of the others had a little bit, but nothing compared to the energy around Trump. Oh, yeah. I mean, did you see did you see when I, I you know, I don't know what it is with DeSantis. But, you know, he's a very, I don't know, there's something about him. Like, I knew he was going to falter, but I didn't think he was going to, like, like I didn't think he was going to flounder as quickly as he did. I mean, he got into the race, and he's just terrible in front of a camera. It's not a matter of prepping him or anything. The guy just has really no, it's not a joke. He really has no screen appeal. He has a funny lisp when he speaks. And I hate to be unkind. I'm not trying to, but it's it. He comes across as petulant. Um, it's just awkward when he, you know, and he, I really feel bad for him because he's a, uh, 
you know me, I, I thought he would be a great, at one time I thought he'd be a great vice presidential candidate. Mm. Now I'm sitting there and I'm going, I don't know, man. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that, I don't think even if Trump and him were to reconcile at some point, I, I don't, I don't know if he really brings anything to the table because he's a terrible campaigner. I don't know why people thought, on, I don't know why supporters of his continue to think that because he won a landslide election in November and is in Florida, which is a very red state, he could actually flip back purple states to Trump or to the Republican column. But I, I don't understand why they think he can win like Michigan or Pennsylvania. Or it, it's, it doesn't translate like that, not just because he's a bad campaigner, but also because he's a uh his his dna he's he's i don't want to say he's too conservative but that's about what it amounts to he doesn't really identify correctly with people like in the great lakes area or in the rust belt um he doesn't i mean theoretically i guess iowa would be a place where he should do good because they're more social conservative but I, why should you pay for the imitation when you can go with the original that's the way people are, are in iowa they're like you know well, why should i buy you know a bud light when i can have you know, an original. That's the kind of thing it is with, I, 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 know, I mean, I, I'm, he's not going to win Iowa, but yeah. No, and, and what I think is also exciting is, I mean, it, it's anecdotal, but I know at least 14 adamant never again Trumpers who are completely back on the Trump train because of all the lawfare and that they see it as election um, interference and that frankly, he's, he's becoming a martyr figure. He's becoming like a heroic martyr. Oh, Trump. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. So the indictment thing, right? I mean, there's going to be a fourth indictment now. Might as well say this to everybody. You all know this already. This is sort of what I said. I said back in December, uh, January, there'd be three indictments, right? I kind of kept saying that for the last, what is it now? Eight months. Um, the fact is we're up, we're already past three. We're going to have a fourth one with uh, Fulton County. So I, I mean, there may be five by next year. I might as well just say that there may be a fifth indictment at some point. And I think it's fit, indictment fatigue is setting in. Um, this one's coming down from Fulton is going to be like literally very short in the news cycle. It's another state indictment. It's kind of expected. There's a couple of possibilities. One is that they're going to, they're, as far as him committing fraud, it's basically just comes down to the phone call. There may be another possibility. I, I suggest that, and this is just me just postulating this. I have no data, no info on this. This is just a hypothetical. It may not happen, but it could have something to do with the electors. Uh, they could be going after the Georgia alternate state slate of electors. Um, and because there's going to be multiple defendants, I'll tell you that. It's not going to just be Trump. Other people are going to be indicted too. Uh, and it's, I think, at this point, I think people just don't care. They're starting to really, it's really just mind num numbing. I mean, who cares? Um, you know, you can't, he can't possibly get convicted in every court and serve out every sentence. That's not going to happen. So, you know, even on a, even in their big wildest dreams, that's just not going to happen. So, I mean, look, what can I say? The, uh, where all of this is going to do is it's like you said, unifying the right behind Trump, destroyed DeSantis, whatever help he had of doing whatever he was going to do. He was going to lose anyway. Gave the nomination. It's, it, I'm speaking um, in past tense here because to me it's all over. Gave the nomination to Donald Trump, which is where it's going to go, in my opinion. And then you're going to have this Trump running, maybe he's been indicted, maybe he'll be convicted by then. It's very likely that he'll be convicted, by the way, especially in the D.C. one. There's a likelihood of that. And that's not a bad thing. I think he should waive, I, not waive, I'm sorry, I think he should claim his rights uh, for a speedy trial under federal law. And he should seek a conviction, get, get the conviction, let it come down quickly in D.C. so he can appeal the case to the, uh, to the D.C. circuit or to the Supreme Court. And then they'll overturn the conviction because he will win on appeal. He may lose on, con on, on, on the district level, but he'll win on appeal, whether it's at the circuit level, especially at, at Sc with SCOTUS, he'll, he'll win the appeal. And he's not going to do a day in prison or anything like that because I keep telling everybody this on my, my social media accounts. He's man has mandated secret service protection. So where are they going to put them? 
You get it? We get the Secret Service sleeping in a cell next to him. They can't protect him in a federal penitentiary. That, that they're not going to allow him in there. They have to. People don't realize every time he shows up for a court hearing, it's the Secret Service that tell them when they're going to be there, and they negotiate it with local law enforcement because they. He's got an entourage of like thirty to forty police, uh, thirty to forty Secret Service agents around him, twenty four seven. So you know, they, they, there's nothing anyone can do about that. So it's just it's impractical. So he'll probably even if he got convicted, he'd end up going back to Mar a Lago under house arrest or to his home in 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 New Jersey or whatever for a few weeks while he seeks an appeal, running his campaign from the golf course. That's all he's going to do. It's not going to mean anything. So that's why I'm never worried. I know a lot of you are worried about that because I get a lot of those questions and messages over and over again, even on the garage. Um, and by the way, you should all be members of Max's garage because that's where we're all talking for 24-7. I mean, it's like never stops in there, I think. It goes around. It goes around the clock. The conversations. The everybody that's in there is an intellectual. I, I I always say that because these man. And then everybody's discussing these things on a legal basis. You guys would really enjoy it if you want to join Premium this month. Rocks. What's the deal? The special we have for Premium this month. We have a special. We have an awesome special for August. It's seventy percent off that we're offering you guys for first time comers. So message me at Roxy underscore Balboa and I'll give you the instructions on how to sign up. And you really want to get it now because this is where we're, where Max is getting ahead of all the indictments and, you know, we got the, uh, the elections that are going to start to heat, heat up now. So now's the time to want to be on there. Cause we do these megabytes too, um, pretty much weekly or biweekly on there as well. So, and he'll answer your questions on demand. Yeah, I do that. And you can get in, you can get into it with me too. It's a real great, great place. If you want to debate me and pick or pick my brain or debate each other or what have you, it's really fun. So big brother doesn't exist there either. So join. And it's not just politics. I want to point that out too. Right. Yeah. I mean, we talk about religion. We talk about history, the history of religion. It's, it's everything in there. It's like being in class with me 24 seven. So if you haven't ever been to one of my seminars, you want to join premium and, and uh, it, it's just a really, it's a really fun, ex- it's a really great thing to do. I mean, we don't, it's different. It's very different than all the other ones where you're basically just paying for a service to read an article and it ends there. You know, now with me, you can read articles and you can engage with them. And then you can just ask me questions and ask others questions. It's really fun. It's a, basically, it's a whole community that we're building. And it's, it's an uh, it's, investment it's, it's, in yourself and your, yeah. and your not right. And expanding like your knowledge. I always tell people get rid of, you. get rid of, get rid of cable, cable because you don't need yeah, it. Right. I mean, seriously, yeah, really are. you can just get, you just get high blood pressure from listening to how many of you get like high blood pressure just listening to the news and get upset with it because I know a lot of them probably do. So, you know, Oh, wait a minute. Stacy's saying I'm looking in the garage here. I don't, actually it's on unchained and James yeah. Bond. Stacy says, and we discussed James. Bond. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we have, we've just, I've done movies. That last week. Yeah. Well, we do movies too. We'll talk about anything, pop culture. I mean, anything people pitch in there. So it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, th- think about definitely joining. Uh, anyways, getting back to it. Uh, so what's the next one you got for me there, uh, Francisco, you got another one. I've I've got two more. So the other one is, um, so this is getting a lot of visibility today on social media. Um, apparently the DA's office posted the formal charges on the Georgia website before the grand jury finished reviewing evidence and then they took it down. Now, I realize it, it doesn't mean it's, I don't think it's going to be compared to mistrial, but the buzz is that it's just pounding the nail on the coffin of how people are turning against the lawfare and turning towards Trump. I mean, it's such a flagrant kangaroo court. Yeah. Now, again, the, uh, look, the, nobody really believes any of what they're peddling. Okay. This these indictments are a joke. Um, you can't persecute someone for free speech, which is what they're doing. He has a right to think whatever he wants. If Donald Trump believes I'm playing devil's advocate here, okay, guys. So I'm going to speak objectively. So don't mis- misconstrue what I'm saying. If Donald Trump believes that the 2020 election was stolen from him, that's his prerogative. He can he can continue to say that until he's blue in the face, and so can his followers and his supporters. If they believe it, want to believe that, that's their prerogative. 
You can say whatever you want. The beautiful thing about the First Amendment is it's sort of like justice. It's supposed to be blind. People can say what they want. Now, it's not, there's no, that's true what the judge said in that case. There's no absolute right to anything for that matter. You can't yell fire, for instance, is the old cliche, right, in a, in a theater. But the thing is, he has a right to believe what he says. And that's all he was doing in the D.C. case is what I'm discussing here. That's all he was really doing was he was expressing that belief uh, to, to, uh, to, everybody and he believes it he earnestly believes that and there may be differences of opinion within his legal team right because i mean i always said is kind of was the, you know weird with his lawyers i didn't know where they all stood on everything on and every one of his lawyers but um that's that's they all have a right to say and think what they want and this is political persecution essentially for a person believing something so yeah this is not and i mean there are people on the, fr I mean, look, there are people that still think that there was Russian interference. So that's, the, again, that's their prerogative. And they have a right to go around talking about that. So if they have a right to go around talking about that and quoting from dossiers, he has a right to say what he wants to say about that. And that's, let the people decide. Let, let, that's the beautiful thing about being, you know, in ancient Greece and ancient Athens, you had the Agora, which was their forum. And people would get up and debate. Citizens would get up and debate and discuss important topics of the day. And then they would vote on them because that was democracy. We call that, in retrospect, direct democracy. But it's, that was democracy. It's, you can call it whatever you want, but that was democracy, you know, the rule of the people. And the public forums these days are, whether it's, you know, telecommunications, whether it's social media, whether it's email, whatever it is, websites, people have a right to express that. Now, there's, there's limits on that, of course. You don't have a right to organize terrorism, but he's not being charged with sedition. He's not being charged with insurrection. He's not being charged with rebellion. So none of those things apply. So what are we all talking about? They, the, if you look at the indictments, I couldn't believe even some people in the DeSantis camp, and of course they have their, their bias, were making such a big deal about the D.C. indictment. I'm saying it looks, it, it was actually, it looks more menacing when you're listening to Smith because of the way he's talking about it. But when you actually go through it and pay attention to what it's saying, I didn't see anything really damaging in it. This is going to be definitely, he'll be, he may be, he may, I have to say may be convicted because of the way the cards are stacked against him in that court, but he'll win on appeal because it's a first amendment issue. In my opinion. Now I'm not a lawyer, but you know, I'm glad to, but that's just my, my prognostication, if you would on it. <clears throat> and last but not least, it seems like a small thing, but it's it's a big one to me because I, I just believe in facts and, and real science. Um, in a case um, over ivermectin, a lawsuit, um, the FDA lawyer claimed in federal court that the FDA never told doctors not to not to prescribe ivermectin to treat COVID nineteen, and the judge called BS and pulled out several examples of it and really reprimanded the the, the attorney uh, for, for outright lying. And I just, to me, it just gave me hope that the courts aren't completely lost, that there's, there's still some sane judges who can recognize the truth when they see it. Well, I'm glad, you know, um, I'm glad about that. But at the end of the day, the information's out there and the people... Well, the people will find it. I always believe, look, you know, oppression by its very nature creates the power that destroys it. So I believe right off the bat, I always have a faith in the that uh, the good are going to win in the end. I, I kind of know the end of the story, so I'm not too worried about it. That's just my my faith that comes out, you know. But I don't really worry too much about, like, even though when we're going through the COVID scare, I didn't worry too much about everything because I figured it's all going to work out in the end. And here we are. We're still alive. We're still surviving. We're still living in the best country in the planet, in my opinion. And call me naive if you want, but I, I think it's going to be, be a lot worse if we were actually living in China, if we were actually living in Russia. Seriously. You know, we have we have the biggest blessings over here in this country. We have the best of everything. We have the best people. That's why. And uh, and we have the blessings of the Lord. So I'm not too worried about it. Brox, we you have a stack of questions that Julie com compiled, right? I do. <clears throat> Julie and Jess. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Uh, all right. So we're going to we're, we're not going to have any formal way here of doing it. I'm just going to throw out some questions. And Francisco, if you want to take it, Max, you want to take it or you guys want to 
take it, you know, at the same time, <laughs> whatever you guys want to do. So let's start off. Um, what do you think of the new recording they're reporting to have of Trump? Something to do with electronic voting and manipulation. Oh, Francisco, do you want to say something about that? Yeah, I, I'll just say that every so-called recording in the past has been taken completely out of context. Um, excerpts of interviews have been taking, taken completely out of context. So why would anyone expect this one to be different? Yeah, everything yeah. That they do, everything they do with Trump uh, is out of context. Um, you just you don't get this entire. What, they, they deliberately go out of their way. Um, they deliberately go out of their way to misconstrue everything he does. He makes a phone call, and it's very simple to me as far as Fulton County goes. He was making a phone call telling them, hey, you know what? You better make sure you're counting all the votes. That's how I interpreted it. I didn't interpret it like he was telling uh, he was telling the, the, the Secretary of State to go out and manufacture Republican votes. That's ridiculous. Why would he be saying anything like that? It, we're, hey, we're not Democrats. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just using that as a hypo, uh, hypothesis, but, you know, you get the general idea. Well, and if you remember, going back to that time period and after the election, um, he and his team had a motto, count every legal vote. They had T-shirts made. He would post on it. And I, I think that was really his message, per, per your point. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you on that, so... What's up? What do we got next? Okay. Um, I'm seeing if Trump is convicted in Georgia, he could be disqualified from being on the ballot. Is this true? Well, if he's convicted, no. 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 He cannot be disqualified for anything he's being charged with, everybody. I, I wanna I wanna put that out there. He's not gonna be disqualified. The only what everyone's referring to when they say that or what they what they whether they're referring to it or not, whether it's stemming from is um, it's the 14th Amendment, Section three, which specifically says that you can be disqualified for rebellion and insurrection from being president. OK, that's essentially what it says. Um, not specifically, but that's essentially what it says. Only Congress. And this is where some may disagree with me, but it's it's a fact. It's understood historically that only Congress can rule someone's dis not qualified for running, not for not for running for office. Not it doesn't specifically even say president and vice president there. It just says for office, and uh, it mentions other specific offices, and then it says other officials. Um, we don't even know if the Fourteenth Amendment applies to the president. Section three does anyway. All of that would have to be adjudicated by the Supreme Court. But regardless, nevertheless, it's a Civil War era amendment. And that law specifically was applied to ex-Confederates. He's not being charged for insurrection and rebellion. So it's not, it's a moot point anyway. He's not even been charged on that. He hasn't even been charged for sedition, which is sort of like insurrection light. So it's like, what specifically can he be? No, he can't. Now, if a, they're going to cite what happened, there's some case out West, I think in New Mexico or Utah or somebody was I think it was New Mexico. Somebody uh, was disqualified in a state court. That's a state issue. They may say, well, they're going to take him off the ballot. If they try to remove his name from the ballot for a federal election in any state, that's a violation of the four, his 14th Amendment equal protection rights under Section 1 of the 14th Amendment and actually also under uh, the Fourth Amendment as well. So he would emit as due process specifically his equal protection under the fourteenth and his due process rights both under the fourteenth and the and the fourth amendment. So if that happens, where they try to remove his name from the ballot, he's going to go to federal court and he's going to say you can't do that, because how does Joe Biden's name appearing and not mine? The only qualifications for being president are that you're thirty five, you've lived stateside for fourteen years, and you're at least thirty five years of age. OK, OK, so you're actually you're 35. You live stateside for 14 years. I'm sorry. And you're a natural born citizen of the United States. Those are the only three qualifications. You can't add qualifications to it. So that's why I often say he can be convicted of a, of of capital offenses and still run uh, for president from jail if necessary. You can't remove his name from the ballot. That's not going to happen. I actually I actually hope it does because they're not going to be successful and there is going to be such an uproar. It's going to turn more people uh, to be in favor of voting for Trump. Well, they, they may try. 
I, that's what they, I hope they try. Um, you know, of course, I don't hope it does, but no, no, yeah, no, I mean, no. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I know what right. you mean. No, no, I know what you mean. But, uh, you know, but regardless, um, it's not going to work at the end. I mean, it's just not going to work. And so everyone just breathe easy. That's not going to happen. They've been recycling that for like two and a half years. They're going to, they're going to, they'll be saying that 10 years from now, frankly. So don't even, they don't even, so don't even worry about it. What else you got? I mean, come on, where else are you going to find an explanation like that to your question? Nowhere, hey, nowhere, nowhere on Twitter. That's for sure. I got to tell you, <laughs> do you guys notice do you guys notice? Okay, so there's a few big accounts that I follow that follow me that go way back. They go back to about some of them are older than mine, some of them are younger than mine. But I noticed something that everyone's got a podcast these days. I, I don't do these often, right? So this one here, I, I'm going to let every, everybody can listen to it, and you, you know, you can play it back over and over again. It'll be on my YouTube channel later. But the thing that gets me is that I I. And I, hey, I, I'm a capitalist and I want everybody to, I hope they're all having fun doing what they're doing. There's a lot of great patriots out there. They're all wonderful people. But really, nobody does go in like, I'll just sit there and I'll actually, because that, I mean, I'm a teacher. What can I say? So it's like, I'm going to sit yeah. there. We get a little debate. You know, I mean, I, 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 I teach adults. So um, the thing is, uh, we could debate. And uh, we can have conversations. And we do this around the clock at Maximus Premium. So if you guys haven't, join Maximus Premium yet, you really need to give it a chance. And so contact Roxy. You can email her at Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com. Uh, I'll have it in the description below um, when this posts. And, uh, or you can DM her on, uh, on Telegram or Twitter at Roxy underscore Balboa. And just tell her you want to join. And you can join this month for 70% off. And try it out. What do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. And no, not only not only will you, yeah. yeah, you'll have a ton of fun and not only will you be the smartest person at the Thanksgiving dinner table or at your job, but you also get <laughs> you also will get discounts on Max's seminars and you also get discounts yeah. on his really cool merch. I don't know if anyone has seen um I don't know if anyone has seen the oh. mug, but I mean the, the mug, mug is like we can't even keep it in stock. That's the most popular piece of merchandise. I think Francisco's got a cup. I think he's got well, you got one, right, Francisco? I, know you I have the mug and the hat. Although in my deep blue state where I live, when I wear the hat on the weekend, people think I'm saying I want him to be locked up. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? You see, you can show your Trump support, right? And at the same time, you won't get egged for doing That's it. Exactly you won't have right. people friends. That's right. You can walk around and show your support of Trump in a deep blue state, and they'll think you're one of them. So it's exactly. a, it was a brilliant idea I had. It really worked out good. So if you want some of this hot merch, well, I'm going to be rolling out my whole merchandise line uh, in the coming months, and it's coming out in piecemeal as we're designing all this kind of fun stuff. I love the. Did you guys see? Oh, of course you've. I know Rox, you've seen it, but did you see Francisco? And I know some of you probably have seen it because I shared it with a few. The um the, the the Ron DeSantis shirt that we've got with the oh, logo the, the Don on. the Don Trump's Ron. I, I thought that was so classy. That that's a you have it as a tank top, right, for women. So it's yeah. it's really a hot piece. I mean it's a, it I have is. to say that is a really classy piece. And it's, <laughs> it's I wear mine to the gym. <laughs> I do. I I I you really do you really I wear do. I well, do. It young. is the most it is the most comfortable tank top ever. <laughs> Well, that's cool. I mean, that's that's that's. Real. I would say I do the same thing, but I mean, it's you know, it's just for women. So <laughs> yeah. I don't want to put that on, you know. So, anyways, I don't do that. I don't walk that road. <laughs> anyways, but uh, but that's cool. But I mean, no, it's 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 true. But it's fun, and we do have a lot of fun. What you got? Another question from? We do. From I, I don't like it. I got a question. Like, let me just say, if you want to, if you're listening live, you can drop a question in the yep. either Unchained or the Garage if you're on premium, and I'm monitoring the room. So if I see your question, I'll, I'll call you out and I'll answer it. So, but go ahead. Yeah, we'll pick it up. We'll pick it up. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So, what is your take on this? It was actually filed on the docket by the court clerk and retracted. Yeah. Well, then it's probably going to be that indictment. We'll have to see if it matches what was posted, and if it matches what was posted, then someone on the unless of course they voted on it stacy unless they voted on it and and it was just reported to the court and the court uploaded it at the wrong time does any if anybody knows 
if they for certain that they didn't vote yet? No, to, just on that one again, that it it just there's, you know, perception becomes reality and it's turning more and more people to, to against the lawfare and for Trump. So it actually gives him positive energy. Yeah. Now, this is all having the, the reverse effect of what that wants to. And that's why his poll numbers, he's going to he's the nominee. I mean, in, in essence, essentially, he's the de facto nominee. He won't be officially the nominee until really until the convention of next year. But I, I, I just don't see I thought this was going to be a more brutal primary. And it's not. He's too far ahead. There's no reason, for instance, that he needs to even consider debating. And he's not going to. I mean, you know, maybe he wants to go on there and beat some people up verbally in a debate down the road, like maybe around January for fun, if he's bored, but there's no reason there, he, there's to, to quote Donald Trump. There's no upside to him debating right now. Cause he's wasting he's so far ahead. We've never had this guys. Think about this. When was the last time we had a primary and a, a, a GOP primary where we had a bunch of candidates, but one candidate wasn't just the leader. He was so far out in front. That you can't, he, you can't see, he can't see, uh, you can't see second place if you're with him. It's too far back. It's like 40 p- points ahead, right? Some polls, he's 50 yeah. points ahead plus. 45, just, I, 45. And that's like a bad day for him. So I think like the low end is like 39 in some polls or something like that. There's never been that. That's because we never had, because he's actually an, he's actually running like an incumbent president. The irony is he's not the incumbent president, right? Because we've never had a former president running for, in our lifetimes, a former president running for president. Because when Jimmy Carter was defeated, and the most two most recent, and George Herbert Walker Bush was defeated in 92, they never came back four years later and ran again. Um, so there's never been that, in the el- essence of incumbency, because you're going to essentially have two incumbents running. You're going to, in all essence, you're going to have the actual incumbent president, Biden, and then you're going to have the former president who's running as an incumbent. And uh, they pull the parties with them because of loyalty. There's brand loyalty there, to use that colloquialism. That's how I see it anyway. I really thought we were going to have more of a primary. I really, really felt we were going to have more of a primary election and and it's turning out to be yeah i mean we're going to be in the throes of don't forget we got to go through the we do have to go through the second tier debates because everyone's going to be fighting with DeSantis and DeSantis could come out of the debates in second or th- in, in second place but he could also come out in third fourth or fifth place depends on how that debate goes because it's really about who wants to be second place Now, it's not about first place. That's too far ahead because the hope is that you can become vice president. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter what anyone says. The vice presidency is the one office everyone says they don't want, but everyone will take if they're offered it. That's that's a fact of life. So it doesn't matter who it is, even DeSantis, which he's not going to probably get it now. I don't I mean, well, ask me again in a year what I think for certain. But at this point, I don't see it because they don't like each other. Obviously, this is too bad. And and DeSantis yeah. is running so bad of a campaign. Yes. Well, and uh, I don't know if you heard what the head of, of a super PAC said. He called Trump supporters uh, despicable and he wouldn't um, urinate on them if they were on fire to save them. That's disgusting. Uh, I, yes, it is. That's disgusting. You know, they all they say we're disgusting. They say MAGA's disgusting and we're mean and this and that because they were chanting against him. And so that's revolting. I mean, they really reach down into the sewer. Now, I, I've made it a point, you know, you guys know, I, I said from the beginning, I wasn't going to come out and pounce on the Santa supporters. I saw a lot of them follow me. There's a lot of crossover because whatever support he's got comes from MAGA. They're kind of soft MAGA, but they're MAGA. And they just, they want to change. I don't understand it, but I do understand it. I try to play devil's advocate, not devil's advocate, that's me. I try to understand, I try to be objective. You know? And and I won't sit here and I won't trash them. And tra- I don't do that. I, other people do, there's plenty of people out there that are doing that. All those other accounts out there. I'm not going to do that. But that's just, that's just wrong. And, um, you know, and, and look, I, a couple of them follow me, uh, really, I mean, I should say a lot of them follow me. And, and I follow a few really big DeSantis supporters. And um, one of them is the best blogger on the Internet for Red State. I think he's the best, Bonchi. Uh, I think he's a DeSantis supporter, though. He is somewhat um, 
uh, I don't know. That's, I'm not going to speak for him. Have to go, go. You make your own judgment. But he's the best blogger on the internet, and I highly recommend everybody read his his column because he's he's really good. I, I've been reading him for years. He's a great guy to talk to. But um, when they, when the, the when the rank and file, or not in this case, it's one of DeSantis's teams says something like that. You know, I just kind of like man. No, that's just you make me never want to ever support you. Even, you know, when you say things like I just it's there's a, something called brand loyalty, guys. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it's like, you know, they're there. It's just there. You know, you either have it or you don't. The next question. Everybody, everybody, you got something, Francisco, to add to that? No, nope, I'm good. good. Rocks. Yeah, we did have a um, we did have a question. Hold on. That somebody dropped an unchain. Um did I see it? Or no? Oh, yeah. Paradise Lake. My hubby wants to know why Max thinks that Biden will be the nominee. Oh, OK. Uh, why do I think Biden's going to be the nominee? Because, OK, again, it's my my approach to life. I go with the obvious because it usually ends up and then you, you may disagree with me. That's your prerogative. But I go with the obvious, the simplest answer. Right now, he is the gonna, he is the candidate that's running. Right. He is sev- at 70 points. He's at 70 percent, 80 percent in the Democratic primary, which is ridiculous. I don't know why RFK Jr. isn't high. Well, the only reason he's not higher is because he's like a media blackout, you know, because uh, if I was a Democrat, I'd be supporting RFK Jr. Not that I agree with him on like half of what he says, but I agree with him on a couple of important things. And I think he's the he's the best alternative. So if I was a Democrat, that's who I'd support in the Democratic primary. If that's all I had to choose from, by the way, that's all I'm saying. But um if you're looking at that that's where it's going guys he's going to be the nominee now do i actually think a year from now a year and a half from now it's going to be biden and trump for certain i wouldn't bet my life on it i mean how can anyone predict that you can't predict that you know you really don't know what's going to happen anything can happen between now and then um but is, is it going to be biden the nominee and uh but i think that there's a very good uh chance that he will be the nominee and uh you know what would i be surprised if we're speaking a year from now and he's announced that he's not he's going to drop out of the campaign because of whatever health or god forbid or whatever and i i mean it could happen and then vice president harris would take the uh you know would take over as possibly people literally well what do you think's going to you know who do you think's going to uh, so see them, or, or it will be probably the vice president. That's what I think personally. I always believe they're going to go with her, and yeah. then they just hold their breath. And and a lot of them are going to hold their nose too. And that's what they're going to do. That's how I. It, that's where I'm at right now. I won't know. I mean, as we get closer and closer, I'll be able to come up with better. That's when I'm actually going to release my final projections. We'll start in in uh, in the middle of next year, early to mid next year. That's when I'm going to start releasing them in segments, and and we'll go with that. And then my final final projections will be in October of next year before the election. But um, we'll get to all of that down the road. Hmm. All right. Well, Biden hasn't said anything about Maui. Do we know if Trump is trying to help Hawaii, even though it's a blue state? Um. I don't know, you want to try that one, Francisco? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously what happened in Hawaii is, is horrific. And for Biden to be out riding his bike and Harris to be in Martha's Vineyard, and when he was asked about Hawaii, he said no comment and walked away. That is just, again, it's it's turning it's turning people off. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Yeah, again... Optics are really bad with this administration. I mean, and so do I think that this is going to hurt him long term? Um, in a blue state like Hawaii, it'll give him a little pain, but I don't think so politically. It's not going to really, you're not going to flip the state. But, you know, it's, uh, it'll have some, it, it just, it, it looks, it just again is another thing that's just negative. There's nothing positive. This administration hasn't done anything for the country. I mean, the only reason the economy is doing okay, and I say it's doing okay, what does that mean? Well, by third world standards, it's doing great. But, you know, it depends on how you're looking at it. But it's because of the nature of our economy by by virtue of its existence. You know, we have a good structured, it's in spite of 
Bidenomics. But Bidenomics stink because look at the other flip side is the inflation rate. Look at the way they're trying to get rid of the combustion engine by forcing people to buy electric vehicles. I mean, we talk about this all the time. It's like, I do not understand the, the impetus that they're trying, that artificial impetus that they're trying to generate by basically banning a technology that's widely available and rather cheap. It's not actually that cheap right now. The only reason gas prices are high, though, is because of his policies. But it's just extraordinary to me. It's like, how many people actually bought electric cars last year? Like four or five percent of the population. How many traded them in from previous years for for gas powered, you know, cars? You know, they never tell you that's that. It's the electric car. There is such a false narrative around them. The battery range. Uh, they wear out quickly. They don't. Re- they wear out even quicker if you live in a cold weather state. They wear out even faster if you live in a hot weather state. Nobody wants them, and they, it costs more to to charge them up than it does to pump gas. Oh come on! It takes you eight hours, right, to charge your yeah. electric car. How long does it take you to gas your car? Like two minutes. Two you minutes. Know? It takes you longer sometimes to pay you know, or to prepay than it does to actually put the gas in the car. So it's like, what is this? So I could be back up on the road and traveling for that 360 miles or whatever they, some electric cars are rated for in, in no time. And you're, you have to wait eight hours to get back on the road. Does that make any sense to anyone? Well, not, not only does it, does it not make sense, but they're there. I, I can't prove this, but I've read a lot now. Um, those, some of the leading climatologists in the world who are highly credentialed, it seems to me that about half of them are saying that it's just nonsensical hysteria over the climate change, that man-made carbon is not causing anything, and this is just normal cyclical. So you've got half of the scientific community is debunking it, and the press doesn't pick up on that. Yeah, it's well, what it gets down to is um, their planetary trends. And it just happens. You know, we've been going, the earth has been warming generally for 12,000 years. So, you know, since the end of the last ice age. And, you know, we're, we're just, it's just generally just warming. I mean, it just is. And, but there are periods when it's cold. Didn't we have one of the coolest and longest and most mild uh, falls and, and winters this year? Fall last yep. year, winter, winter this year, right? And the spring, it was rather mild until it got really hot all of a sudden and, you know, everybody freaked out, but it's heck it's summer. I mean, you can go back to the 1990s and you can find record temperatures in different parts of the Southwest United States that haven't even been broken yet. So I don't know, like, I don't get it. Well, anyway, the people want to believe what they want to believe. Do I believe you should go around throwing trash around and polluting you know, the neighborhood and, and, you know, whatever. No, I don't think so. And I think it's a, it's a good idea to stick, you know, to try to as much as possible. Um, I'm not a big advocate for recycling or anything like that, but I mean, if there's a practical, and I don't, I don't believe there should be forced recycling in other words or stuff like that, but you know, I think people should just try to keep things clean. Um, that's how I like to put it. Uh, don't litter. A lot of people litter. Nobody cares about that. Does anybody ever go to these blue? Uh, this is kind of funny. We talk about the environment. Drive down Los, <laughs> drive down the streets of Los Angeles. The environment looks terrible. So, like, let them get in there and clean up their city first. Um, no, seriously. I know they say, well, you're talking about two different things there, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's like, man, that when you're in New York City. It smells like marijuana wherever you go. You know what I mean? It's disgusting. Don't ever take a subway. Make sure you bring bleach with you. So it's like, <laughs> I just don't know. I think to myself, well, am I right or am I wrong? You know, it's it's it, it, it's like these cities that are these blue cities. And I'm like, my goodness, their, their, their local environment is like a cesspool and they're going around telling people we're going to ban your stoves. We're going to ban your cars. We're going to, we're going to do all these things because it's going to make the world a better and safer place. It's going to make it a utopia. And I'm like, dude, your city <laughs> is thinking to hell and literally piss. It is. <laughs> it's, 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 it's literally, I don't even know where I'm sitting. I just got to like, you know, give me the bottle of bleach. Um, seriously. It's, it's that bad. And, You're right. You have a good point. No, it's true. I mean, I'm sorry if that, you know, 
you know, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to people, but it does to me. But anyways, guys, again, you're listening to Magabytes. This is my full-length podcast I do exclusively for members of Maximus Premium. And uh, today is premium day. We run, we, we typically, we, it's been a while since our last one. We had a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I typically do these at least uh, once every uh, four or five weeks. And uh, so it's open for everybody and we have questions and we have a lot of stuff to discuss still ahead. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you want to join premium this month for um, 70% off, uh, contact Roxy. Uh, you can email her at Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com and send her an email and tell her you want to come on board and uh, you want the discounted price. And uh, we'd love to have you come and give it a try. What do you have to lose? Yeah. So you can DM me I'm- too at Roxy underscore Balboa on Telegram or Twitter. That's right. I've got her handle in the description below. Yep. So right. anyways, what else have we got? Oh, we got a good one. I know you're going to have a fun time with this one. Uh, can you talk a little bit more on the EU wanting to rebuild the Roman Empire? You called it the long-term supranational government, the United States of Europe. Yeah, supranational. National. Um, okay, so the EU. Okay, well, the, uh, the European Union is a is moving towards what I believe will be a supranational uh, f- a form of government. It, it, the, uh, the goal, it was expressed in a couple of different articles from the 20th century of to build a United States of Europe. This was back before the EU existed during the Cold War. Um, what I believe, uh, how, the reason I call it a Roman Empire is because of my religious convictions. Uh, I'm, in, you know, an es- I'm into eschatology, which is the study of end times. I'm a Pentecostal, a Protestant, and an Evangelical, and so I look at everything that goes on uh, from an end times point of view. I I believe prophecy is either fulfilled or unfulfilled, but I think that we have a lot of unfulfilled prophecies, and I'm talking about biblical prophecies, of course. Um, So when when I say that, that's where I'm coming from with that particular phrase, a revived, uh, some people on my in my faith, say a revived Roman Empire, Second Roman Empire. We want to rebuild the Roman Empire, but it essentially is what they expressed when they say a United States of Europe, and uh, it's the old like children's rhyme, right? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So through the last two thousand or fifteen hundred years, there's been a, a push in Europe uh, to through different uh, kingdoms. Uh, through different monarchs, through different periods of history, uh, to rebuild what was or reconstitute what was the Western, specifically, empire, uh, which fell in 476, uh, and eventually the entire Roman Empire, which the, the Eastern Empire, which we know as the Byzantine Empire, fell in the 15th century AD. So there is just this goal to do that, and uh, it seems that things seem to be moving slowly but or not so slowly these days in that direction the eu is becoming more intrusive but they are also having serious problems and i think what i was referring to in that garage post on premium which spawned this question was the fact that um they have a it actually says in the book of daniel daniel chapter 2 uh i think it's verse 37 or 38 that they uh they they will try to, it says, famously, it says iron and clay do not mix. So just like iron and clay don't mix, they won't be able to cleave to each other. And the they it's speaking of there, the context of that, uh, as the prophet Daniel was interpreting a dream by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. These were all real people, by the way. I don't know if who was listening to this, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, if you're a Jew, um, even if you're a Muslim, you, you, you'd you understand that Daniel did exist. He was a prophet. He's respected in three religions. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar is widely known in throughout all of history. He was the king of Babylon in the 6th century BC, uh, probably the most famous king at that time, uh, probably the most famous Babylonian king since, uh, since Hammurabi, um, who was actually more of a lawgiver. But uh, the, uh, and that was millennia earlier, that was centuries earlier. But uh, he was having a dream, and he had a dream of this statue, and it came down to the two legs of iron. The two legs of iron. Every part of the statue had a different metal that it was made from, and each one of those metals represented a different kingdom, four kingdoms that were going to major kingdoms, empires, if you would, that were going to come after Dan during Daniel's time and after Daniel's time. And when it got down to the legs of iron, 
uh, the two legs of iron split east and west. The Roman Empire was literally split six centuries later, seven centuries later, actually. It uh, actually eight centuries later. It was split into two halves, part four parts actually, and then two major wings, east and west, and uh, until it both sides fell in their own time, and that iron. Uh, was was Rome. Rome was always described as iron in the Bible. It's always referencing that it would crush all of its everybody. That's what it did. When it moved into an area of the Romans, they absorbed everything. They crushed out, they absorbed cultures, they would c- annihilate them, the people, they would just uh, uh, annihilate the governments that they would come into. They would just move in, and it was sort of like Blitzkrieg. And so the feet of clay and iron that come out of the legs, though, whether uh, as the prophet was trying to interpret or was interpreting for Nebuchadnezzar, it meant that there was going to be these two different, or as it was being explained to the prophet, I should say from the Lord, it was these two different materials that clay and iron can't mix together. And that's what I was referring to in that is that they were mingling. It actually says in the book of Daniel, they mingled their seed with the seed of men, what that was basically saying. And that's the King James English um, was that they were trying intermarriage and all throughout the last 15 centuries in Europe, you had these different alliances that were um, solidified, if you would, these that were that were were um, uh, that were that were accomplished through marriages, through intermarriages, and uh, and that's why you end up with families that ruled throughout European history uh, that were all kind of somewhat at some point related. It kept the peace at times. At times, it didn't. But they were constantly trying to, there was this, this idea, there was even the Holy Roman Empire at one point to try to unify uh, that, uh, uh, that to bring back what was the glory of Rome, because everybody wanted to reconstitute that. They wanted to reestablish that because that was the peak of civilization. You can go, if you look at the last 2000 years in Toto, it can be bookended by two major Western civilizations. I'm talking about in the West. So that means uh, Euro-America. You can look at the Romans and Roman civilization, and then American or Anglo America are, are really the peaks of civilization technologically, culturally, socially, politically. Um, however, you want to look at it, these are two terrific periods in history that bookend the last two millennia. And, uh, and in between that, you have this long dark age for a big chunk of that, about 75% of that. Um, and then you have the modern age, which came into existence starting around 400, 450, 600. Sorry, 450, 500 years ago with the age of exploration and the Protestant Reformation and and the, the Renaissance. So you have these. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the clay and the iron, that's what I was referring to there was specifically that. And so they're trying that. And it, it's hard because they have problems. And just like the scripture says, they don't cleave to one another. They don't get along. You know, the Germans don't like the French. The French don't like the Germans. The English left. I mean, I should say the British left. They, they pulled out. Uh, the Swiss don't really, they're not going to be a part of it. Uh, the Italians are moving into a populist state. They have major stresses on their goal, but it'll eventually be accomplished, I believe, uh, when we're right at the end times. We're not there yet, obviously, because some things haven't been fulfilled yet. So, um, But it's going in that direction. I've been watching it since I was a kid, and it's sort of interesting to see unfold. Sorry for the long answer. I hope that didn't put everybody to sleep, but that's how my view is on it. See, you get history, you get a little bit of everything. You get, you know, <laughs> you get biblical perspective, biblical knowledge. I mean, come on. What else could you possibly pack into an answer to a question? I don't think there's anything else you could thrown in there. Yeah, I, I well, you know, I tried to, I didn't have any prepared notes on that guy, so I was going out of memory. So excuse me if I made a couple of technical errors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um can you discuss the appointment of Hunter Biden special counselor and why it is or isn't legal? Um, well, I think the, the I said it in a post. I don't know where uh, that uh, the statute. I think it was over the weekend. The statute. It's not a statute. Uh, it's actually the Hunter uh, Biden. Okay, appointing Weiss is not illegal. That is an internal guideline or a policy from the Department of Justice that everyone was thinking is a congressional statute. It's never been mandated by Congress. So that's the reason it's not illegal. That's why nobody's talking about it or doing anything about it. So the attorney general, those mem- that, that uh, rule was put in place by 
uh, the attorney general's office, I think at the end of Janet Reno's um, administration in the DOJ. And I think it was around late 99 when that was put in there. Um, but it's not, it's, it's like being at your job and they have policies. If you violate a company policy, you can lose your job. Your boss could fire you, but no one's going to charge you in criminal or civil court over it. They can't, there's no statute protecting your boss's company in that regard. There's nothing illegal about it. In other words, so that's an analogy, by the way. So, so gems like that, you are, you are the first and only uh, person on social or the news to call that out and explain it. I definitely got it wrong because I only read the section 600.3, uh, not 600.0. Right. So mm-hmm. gems like that, you know, are what premium is all about. Um, and the, the other thing I'd say is, so it's not illegal but to me, it is just an unbelievable PR opportunity for the GOP to start quoting the rule and like shove shove the Democrats' nose in it. Not that it'll change it, but it's just going to feed the flames of the martyrdom here. Yeah. Um, the uh, and thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it, Francisco. Look, you know the the thing is, it is unethical. That's what you're basically saying. I would not have done that. I mean, considering the person in his office, it shows you the corruption that's going. That's nepotism. It's a form of nepotism. That's what you're doing. And, you know, I mean, this is why we need to bring independent counsels back. We need to bring back the Office of Special Counsel under the ethics. Um, I think it was the Ethics and Government Act of 1978, which was a Democrat law that was passed by a Democrat Congress and signed into law by Jimmy Carter. And it was put in place because of what happened during Watergate. And they created the Office of Special Counsel. And those special counsels were wholly independent of the attorney general. And they were appointed by district court, by actually circuit court, not even a district court, by the D.C. Circuit Court. A bunch, a series of judges would appoint them. And they answered to Congress. So you had the judicial branch in the appointment. You had the congressional branch, which had oversight. They had to constantly come before them. And and the attorney general, but they worked out of the attorney general's uh, Department of Justice. They had their own office within the DOJ. And the attorney general could dismiss them for good cause, but he had to have, or she had to have, really good cause to do that. And both sides benefited from it. The purpose was to rout out corruption in the in the White House and in the administration. And both sides profited when Democrats were in power, when Republicans were in power. The Republicans hated it because they Democrats used that in the 1980s and early 90s to go after Reagan and and Bush, 41, uh, over the Iran-Contra affairs. The Republicans returned the favor with Kenneth Starr and the investigations into the Clinton administration, which led to his impeachment. Um, But both sides benefited with other investigations that went on. There was at one point where Janet Reno, I think it was, uh, uh, actually appointed a special uh, independent counsel counsel to uh, go after... um, uh, actually, I think it was the secretary was one of the members of the Clinton ca- cabinet and thoroughly investigate him for corruption. I don't remember what the outcome was for that. But so once they were appointed, you you really couldn't get rid of them. They didn't have a time limit and they had an unlimited budget. Kenneth Starr, of course, used five years to 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 collect all his information on on Bill Clinton and the Monica Lewinsky affair. But um, the uh, uh, we need to bring we need the, the law sunset. In the 19, in 1999, we need to bring that back because right now all you have is the attorney general appointing special counsels, which directly answer to him. And another thing about the independent counsels, they couldn't be fired by the president. So there was actually a provision in the congressional statute which prohibited the president himself from involving himself because he was supposed to be a person that could be investigated by them. That's why Kenneth Starr was immune, because all that could happen was Janet Reno could have with good cause fired him or to, or dismissed him but then she would be brought before congress and all that would happen is the dc circuit would have appointed another uh, special counsel so it wouldn't last for very long reappoint him so there was no way around it that, that was a very good law and it believe it or not it was a democrat was a democrat law and it was done for the wrong reasons they did it to go after watergate but it was actually good both sides were profiting it kept everybody a little a little more honest that was there was going to be punishment for your crimes or your corruption. 
There could be. Let's put it like this. There could be. And that's why this is going on right now, guys. This is why we have these these kind of like they're not really independent. They're not independent. They're just they're just appointees, prosecutors like Smith. Anybody there? All right. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody we're, we're here. <laughs> Did everybody leave you? So, My brain is spinning right now. <laughs> I know. It's a lot of info. I'm, I'm still sorry. I'm still trying to, I mean, even Stacy posted in the room. She's going to have to go back on the, re-listen to the answer on the EU, the one from earlier. I think we all are. Yeah. We're going well, to take, have to take notes on that one. If you guys have any questions, feel free uh, to uh, send an email to Roxy or to message me or something um, on, uh, but I would say, just so you know, um, that I was, and I, I, this is what you get again on premium. I, I do this, tw- uh, it's not 24 seven really, but I mean, it is pretty much every day where we are engaging on um, this kind of stuff on all different topics and we'll mix in everything. And, uh, I try to remain objective and give you the facts now, you know, I don't know what's the stat now at Francisco, my, my accuracy stat, you know, it's 276 and four. Okay, so that's not bad. Two seventy six and four, so <laughs> it's not bad. Not, not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> that, that's not that's not that bad. Well, I know there's some people that say no. It's, you know, actually, it's about right. I, I I did that, and I think that's about that sounds about right. I know you've been following me for three four years, so you've been. Yeah, you know, I remember the first time I ever gave you the stat. You had one of the greatest the greatest comments of all time. At the time, I think you were like a uh, hundred. I said you were a hundred right and two wrong, and your immediate comment was, "What were the two? <laughs> <laughs> what were the two? How did I get those wrong? How did I get and those?" I, wrong? I, I was actually mistaken. I was mistaken. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know something. Um, the uh, the the thing is, I was probably being sardonic when I said that too. I thought there were more than that, but I think what it is is when you add in the ha- a lot of the house races and some of the local races. I don't predict every election, every every yeah. single election, and every I don't. You can't. I mean, there are thousands of elections on a on a midterm and a general and, and every and every county and state, and I don't do that. But I do go through with some with the ones, and I do take positions that a lot of people don't like. You know, I mean, they don't want to hear it. And look, Zeldin is a great example. I, so many people on premium and on my followers wanted him to win and they felt he was going to win. I just didn't think, I didn't think it was going to happen, you know, and, uh, but I thought he was going to get very close. That's exactly what happened. He came within what, five points. And that is amazing because I know how many Democrats are in New York city. It's a two to one advantage. That's a big city. So, you know, I just knew that he would have to carry a ton of Democrats. And I knew he wasn't going to do that. Uh, I know the people there. Well, I'm from there. And, you know, it's just a different culture. Same thing in, in states like uh, I think there was some like a Senate race in Washington last year or something. I said that wasn't going to happen. But I thought we were going to do pretty good. You know, and, and, and as a result, the down the ballot races were going to be better. And that's what happened. We picked up House seats in, in, in New York as a result of Zeldin's campaign. He actually helped down the ballot candidates by running such a terrific campaign for governor. And I felt bad when he lost the one race I'm still fuming about is the Arizona governor's race, because I personally wanted to see Kerry Lake yeah. uh, become the, the governor of Arizona. And that was one of the four I missed. And I didn't, and you know, what's funny about that is I think everyone missed that because Everybody did. Was, it yeah. was so easy to see that she was going to win that election. Every stat, every number, everything pointed to her winning. And sure, it was within that, you know, those polls were showing her ahead three to seven points. And then whatever happened, happened there. We're not going to go into that. But um, but we still have a shot uh, because of the waiting on the decision from the, the Arizona State Supreme Court. Of course, with Abe Hamadat in the attorney general's race, we'll see what they say. I know he filed an appeal for a mistrial. And if that happens in Arizona and he wins that appeal uh, and they declare his previous trial a mistrial, it throws the Arizona uh, attorney general's race wide open again. Not that it's really a race that's being run. It's not technically. It's over, but that they're going to allow him to present his evidence uh, in that race there. And that race there is very different. That whole case there is very different. He's not alleging fraud or anything like that. What he's alleging is that they're not counting all the ballots. 
and that there is actually he's using a Democrat uh, perspective, which is what the Democrats are doing in every state when they argue court cases with Republicans where they have controversial elections. We'll just call it like that. He's op he's taking their perspective. Why are Election Day ballots not being counted? And why were they rejected? We got to count those ballots. And he won those out of seven to seven out of 10 of them. He won on Election Day. And the margin's only 200. And I think I don't know, 20 votes or something like that. So uh, it's a very good shot, but it depends on what the Supreme Court of the state says. And that's all the news. That's just out there in the news. You guys can follow that. So I'm watching that closely. What else do we, what else do we got? Uh, okay, Francisco, would you have a comment? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay. Uh, what do you make of the U.S. credit rating downgrade? Oh, Francisco, I'll let you do that one. You want to do that one? Yeah, so I, 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 the upgrades, downgrades, I mean, it, it, it's not great, but it's not disastrous. And I think the reality is the debt level is out of control and that's reflected in the downgrade. It's just a reality. I think it's more to me, it's a warning. If we keep on the track we are, we're going to be downgraded into serious levels. And then the last thing, there, there is an immediate painful impact which is you know the the interest we pay on the debt is is it, it making har it harder and more expensive to service our debt so the downgrades they're not disastrous but they're not great and it's a warning for the future mm -hmm. i agree yeah i think it's just a, again it's it's bidenomics <laughs> you know it's bidenomics i mean the bottom line so another thing uh, to help trump right yeah well before though right didn't moody's downgrade yes. us at one point yeah yep so we keep it's just the way we, things are going in this country so i'm looking at the comments here um you know stacy's making me laugh here she's saying my add kicked in max i'm gonna have to re listen that's what you that was about your that was about your eu <laughs> answer oh that's funny that's too much that's too much so anyways let's see here um I, I, uh, I'm just, that just cracks me up. Anything else? Did I, did I miss anything? No, we've been picking them up as we go in here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, so no, yeah. Can Trump be placed under house arrest without the ability to communicate via phone or internet after any conviction? No, that'll, that'll never stick. I mean, no, that's never, <laughs> that's, you can't, you can't do, they're going to put him in solitary confinement. No, on, on house arrest. No way. Now, can they tell him uh, that he can't discuss certain aspects of the case? Like, you know, of course, you don't want him talking. I, I, again, I, I don't want to. You know what? I'm not going to be because I'm going to post this on YouTube. I'm not going to go into all these different specifications. You never know where things are going to happen. But let's just say, can he some things be censored? Sure. I mean, you know, because it is a case, it is a, a pending case. Um, personally, I think Trump only needs to talk about is Joe Biden, what he's going to do for this country focus on that and he can just say i'm going to reform the doj because everybody knows what that means and and that's it uh but can he be censored and silenced no i mean yeah, let's say yeah can they put a court order in and say you can't go on your phone for the rest of your life or you know for the for the for the not the rest of your life but for the uh for the next uh for the next month or two or three until the pen yeah but it's he's going to appeal that and then higher court's going to step in it's not gonna, yeah that's not going to hold so, so, so they 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 can't censor him. Um, but the one thing that I think is going to blow up in the left's face is they're they're going to by default kind of muzzle him if he's spending a significant part of his time Monday through Friday in court. He he won't be able to be on a device during that time. But then as soon as court's out for the day and on the weekend, forget about it. They're making they're going to make him more of a martyr by having him spend a lot of time next year sitting in a courtroom. Yeah, and he's also don't forget he has an um, he's raising a ton of money through all of these indictments that they're saying well they'll get him to spend through that. And and I posted something on the fortress about that last week. Yeah, I mean, he's spending a lot of it, too. But the fact is that don't forget, in 2016, he had basically ran his whole campaign from his Twitter account on his phone. And he didn't spend I mean, he did eventually start spending his own money. And he did. He funded his own campaign largely during the primary. But 
he has an untapped fortune that he can go into at any time if he needs cash, which he it, it, there's. So there's really, this is not going to like, if they think this is going to financially drain him or prevent him from getting the nomination, it's not going to have any impact. I'm telling you on the nomination, it's having a positive impact. If it means all of next year, he's in court, not on the campaign. Well, all he'll do, like you said, on the weekends, he's going to go bonkers. That means his rallies are going to have yep. to make up for what? 10 times, 10, 10 missed rallies during the week. So that rally that he holds in Western Pennsylvania or in Erie, Pennsylvania, is going to have 150,000 people that are going to be attending from all over the country that are going to drive there instead of 70,000 people. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to work. And, and everyone's going to know why he's not uh, campaigning because he's going to be you know, but on breaks, telling people what's going on as much as he can from his from his Twitter or from his uh, Truth Social account. Hopefully, he's back on Twitter by that time or X, whatever it's called now. Exactly, and I, I got a great stat for you. So, prior to the first indictment, he was raking in one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a day in d- donations. He's now raking in eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars a day. Wow, money's wow. not a problem, guys. Yeah, you know, this is again, it's not it's not having the effect I think that they want. If they really believed he was easy to beat, why would they be trying to put him in jail? That's you know, that's just it. If they really believed he was that easy to beat, that's how they acted in 2016. Let him get the nomination. We can defeat him or easy, right? And he got the nomination. It didn't work out too well for them. So now I mean, obviously they don't think he's going to be that easy to beat. They know how weak Biden is. And I don't know how anybody can look at if you're on the left, if they're planning this. I don't know how anybody can think DeSantis is is going to be harder to defeat I, after the way you see he can't run a campaign outside of Florida. And that again, that's no disrespect uh, intentionally to the to the governor, but he really he he wasn't just just to use the cliche. He's not ready for prime time. I don't know how else to really put it. I have to just default on that. But I mean, really, no, it's it's Trump that's gonna. It's either Trump or bust. You know what I'm saying? Hundred yep. percent. Yep. What's next? Uh, all right. Last question: If um, if elected, can Trump pardon himself? Yeah. Well, that's a constitutional question. Eventually, the Supreme Court would probably have to adjudicate. But yes, he could for 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 the federal crimes. The state crimes, no. That only the uh, the states can do that, depending on their 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 state laws. But the president can pardon himself. Uh, is, is at least generally accepted. But again, it would probably be a challenged in court and it would uh, go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court would have to adjudicate it. Yeah. And if you guys want to talk about some really cool outlaws, be sure to attend <laughs> Max's uh, his seminar. It's actually a new seminar. It's Outlaws and Angels. So it's part of his um, his infamous Outlaws, the Lives and Times of the Gunfighter series that he's doing. So you're not going to want to miss this one. And as premium members, you get a discount on it. So Make sure you reach out to one of the Angels of Warriors to sign up on that one. Um, so that's going to be September 21st to the 23rd uh, with mm-hmm. an encore the 26th to the 28th. And Francisco, we know you're coming to that one. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah I can't of, wait for that one. People, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's actually, uh, I love doing Samurai. Um, that's my favorite kind of like subject to do during the, the spring. But I love, I mean, we have the most fun at the Outlaw Seminars. Last August, it was packed out, and I remember we were sitting around and talking. It felt like when we did it back in the first, I think we did it first in 20, didn't we first do that in 21, right? In August Into of 21. the year before, yeah. Yeah, the year before, and and I'm telling you, that seminar was just, it's always packed out. So I'm doing a sequel this year, and it's Outlaws and Angels. I have to do that for Bree <laughs> because I know she's going to listen to this, Outlaws and Angels. But it's part two, and we're going to be talking about corruption uh, in Arizona. We'll be discussing that. I'm going to be discussing it going all the way back to the late 1800s, organized crime, how it first settled in Arizona in the Southwest. And then we're going to actually uh, go through the female uh, outlaws, female gunfighters, very violent women of the Old West. It's a lot of fun. It's three days. And it's like being on a camp out with me uh, virtually. It is. It's a lot of fun. We stick around. And after it's like that always is this thing about that seminar when we're done. It's like that series. It's like everyone sticks around for like another half hour, 45 minutes. They don't go. They just sit around. We all sit around talking. about. You don't want it to end. 
you know, it's it's a lot of fun. We've got original music. We've got original um, art. We've got it's a lot of it's a blast. And this one's going to be completely new and different. And I have to tell you, it's really shaping up beautifully. Are this you going to really tell your ghost be, story again? I will. I will tell. I have a. I have a new. A new ghost story to discuss. So we we're going to have fun with that. We're going to we do a whole creepy part of it as well. It's a lot of, it's fun. I mean, it just it, it, it threw everyone off when I first did that. Remember that everybody got. <laughs> it's like what on earth is this? It was like you crickets. Know? It was crickets on the phone. Everybody was like, everybody was what? just like staring at their screen, like creeped out. <laughs> It was like, what the heck just, where are we going with this? It was a lot of blast. So contact any of the angels or warriors, contact Julie, Jessica, talk to uh, Jackie, um, contact Roxy. You know how to reach them, um, eyes, and let them know that you want to uh, to attend. It's next month. Uh, we have two performances. So if the dates don't work the first time, we'll be doing it again. And then, of course, you want to pre-register for in November. What is it? November 10th and 11th. And we'll be doing an encore. I haven't set that yet, but it's going to be the preview for 2024, right? So I'll be doing a preview of election 2024 to kind of set the stage for the coming year. Um, and we'll be discussing uh, some of the upcoming elections. We'll be talking about the state of the race with the primaries. Um, and then we'll be discussing election strategies and tactics, how we can win locally. So I'll be breaking that in and I'll be doing sequels to that. Uh, next year, we'll be breaking all new seminars next year that I'm in the process of writing. So we have a whole new slew group of, uh, of some, just a bunch of new ones, except there'll be one. I'll be doing Pirates in February and or March. I'm not sure which month I'm going to put it on the calendar. But a lot of you have emailed me or emailed Roxy and DM want to do Pirates because you've missed it the first time. I, I got like a, I don't know, I got a couple of dozen uh, con, uh, emails. So yeah. it was, it, yeah, we'll be doing it. We'll be doing it uh, again. So um, you can pre-register for any of these, by the way. And uh, so, but definitely next month we'll be talking about the Old West. So sign up for that one. You wouldn't be disappointed. And as premium members, you do get a, a huge discount. So take advantage yeah. of that. Lots of lots of good stuff coming up. That's it. So is that it? We, we good for, the, for this time? I mean, we are we, good for this time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, Francisco, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on with us. My pleasure. Love being here. It was a blast. Thanks again, Francisco, for coming. And everybody, I'm glad you showed up. I hope you have a good time. I'll be processing this, posting it later so you can revisit it. Um, and uh, without further ado, then, if we're good, I'm going to close this program and... Tell everybody thanks again. Thank you, Roxy, as well, and for being here. And of uh, I will see you around the campfire. Okay. Make sure you guys join premium. Yeah, join premium. Contact Roxy right now. Send her a DM. Send her an email. Ask her what the discount is, and she'll get you all hooked up. Uh, tell her I sent you. So yeah. <laughs> talk to you later. God bless you. We'll see you later. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Okay. God bless. Ciao. Ciao.